Google? Well, I mean, on a, like this is like, I feel like I could ask my 11-year-old son, like, what should we do with Google? And he'd be like, Google's dumb. <laughs> Do you want to at least hint that you're aware of the broader concerns about Google as opposed to like how many? Donald Trump recently appeared at the Economic Club of Chicago, where he discussed tariffs and other economic topics that he clearly doesn't have a strong grasp on. Surprisingly, the host pushed back quite a bit, showing a deeper understanding of the economy, which made for an interesting exchange. Sam Cedar broke this down on the Majority Report highlighting some of the more ridiculous moments from Trump's speech. In this video, we'll take a look at clips from both Trump at the Economic Club and Sam Cedar's commentary. I'll be sharing my thoughts along the way. Let's dive into this and see how it unfolds. And I think just about everybody listening to this program uh, wants Harris to win, or at the very least, Trump to lose. Um, you can find those polls. If you want indications as to how they are campaigning now that they feel they're in trouble, you can also find those. Harris was on Charlemagne the God, uh, the God, the God. Um, the God's fun. In the uh, uh, program, The Breakfast Morning. Uh, what is it? Uh, Breakfast Club. Yep. And... Um, some have taken that as an indication that they're worried about uh, uh, black voters, particularly black uh, men voters. And we heard Obama the other day, you know, chastise them in, in a way that only Obama feels like he has a license to do. Uh, Let me pause for a moment here. Kamala Harris has been making appearances on almost every show out there, so I wouldn't read too much into it. It just seems like part of a broader media blitz rather than a sign of anything bigger. His respectability politics, it brought back some, actually not some great memories uh, for me. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, so you could make that as an indication, you know, Harris is going on, I think, uh, Fox News today. So if you want to see indication, people are interpreting that as like maybe uh, they're they're worried. Uh, who knows? I mean, Hillary went on the Breakfast Club. That's where she pulled the uh, hot sauce out of her purse. But, but she went on the Breakfast Club in April. Oh, the primary. I see. Yeah. She went in the primary. Um, here is Sean Hannity. And um, this is like what's interesting is his audience is not watching um the bloomberg uh uh you know the bloomberg presentation of the economic club of chicago right like i just don't think that they're like looking this stuff up and but hannity is gonna highlight this and uh here's how he introduces it so in one of his greatest all-time moments on the campaign trail, former President Donald Trump absolutely schooled Bloomberg's editor-in-chief today during a live appearance at the Economic Club of Chicago. Despite things getting well, a little heated at times, Trump frankly masterfully navigated the situation, laid out what was a clear vision for American prosperity. Let's take a look. Okay, now uh, this is a, uh, he plays a tiny clip. I want to play one or two other clips to just give you a sense, like, if he's got to play this, if he's playing this, he's doing it because he's afraid that the other people are going to see other clips. Uh, because, I mean, this is just uh, bat crap crazy. He, he I mean, uh, Trump, you know, and I, uh, I, I understand that politicians speak out of their arse quite a bit, but uh, this, I thought, was pretty impressive. Oh, the U.S. Justice Department is thinking about breaking up Alphabet, as Google likes to be known now. Should Google be broken up? I just haven't gotten over something the Justice Department did yesterday, where Virginia cleaned up its voter rolls and got rid of thousands and thousands of bad votes, and the Justice Department sued them that they should be allowed to put those bad votes and illegal votes back in and let the people vote. So I haven't, I, I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten over that. A lot of people have seen that they can't even believe it. The question is about Google, <laughs> President Trump. Yeah, look, Google's got a lot of power. They're very bad to me, very, very. It's honestly wild to think about how we got here as a country. 
As Sam Cedar points out, Fox News viewers aren't even watching these conversations. Yet we're still at a point where Donald Trump could very well become president again. Anyone else in this position would have been disqualified long ago. Yet here we are. It's both absurd and alarming. While it's easy to laugh at moments like this as Sam does, the reality is that it won't be funny if he gets re-elected. This isn't just a joke anymore. It's something that could seriously happen again. Uh, they only have bad stories. In other words, if I have 20 good stories and 20 bad stories, and everyone's entitled to that, you'll only see the 20 bad stories. And I called the head of Google the other day and I said, I'm getting a lot of good stories lately, but you don't find them in Google. I think it's a whole rigged deal. I think Google's rigged just like our government is rigged all so over you the would, place. So you would break them up, in other words? I'd do something, but you have to have... <laughs> <laughs> I can speak from the standpoint of what they've done to me personally. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, this is a big deal. Um, it's a big deal, what we're doing with Google. And, um, and it's a big, uh, you know, it, it, it seems like it's a big uh, issue. And you're going in to talk to uh, the Bloomberg news. I mean, you would imagine that maybe this might come up, but he doesn't seem to like, I don't need to prepare for anything. That's all I need to you do. You need to prepare. You need to prepare. <laughs> Google? Well... I mean, on a, like this is like, I feel like I could ask my 11-year-old son, like, what should we do with Google? And he'd be like, Google's dumb. <laughs> do you want to at least hint that you're aware of the broader concerns about Google as opposed to like how many, you know, Trump did something good stories end up on the front page? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Exactly. Donald Trump tends to focus on issues that directly impact him rather than the broader concerns. The complexities of companies like Google or larger economic policies just don't seem to be his priority unless it personally affects him. It's a very self-centered approach that doesn't consider the bigger picture or the long-term consequences for the country. That's why it's frustrating to see him dismiss important matters that require a more thoughtful and comprehensive view. It's amazing. And that's only after he has to be like... Hey, wait a second. Why are you bringing up what the... Oh, I mean, Justice Department, I'm just so now, upset about the DOJ. The only thing I could say about the, his, you know, like immediately avoiding the question of the DOJ is that he wants to bring it back to the voting because they are really, really trying to set up the pins, essentially, for uh, claiming that the election has been stolen. And so, you know, I... I there could be some method to his madness. He, he clearly doesn't have any awareness of this case whatsoever. Sam Cedar brings up a valid point regarding Donald Trump's recent push to reiterate his claims about the 2020 election. At this point, it seems that most people are aware of his stance on the election results. Sam also pointed out that we're not likely to know the winner on election night due to potential legal challenges, which is a reflection of how close this election is expected to be. It's surprising to some that Kamala Harris isn't ahead by a larger margin. But this is where we are in the political landscape today. Even if Kamala Harris wins, the aftermath might be complicated with lawsuits from various sides, which could delay the final results for days or even weeks. The situation reflects the contentious nature of modern elections. While Sam Cedar offers his perspective, the reality is, is that this uncertainty can create anxiety regardless of which side one supports. Let me know in the comments what you think about Sam Cedar's analysis of Donald Trump's appearance at the Economic Forum and your thoughts on the upcoming election. Whether you're discussing Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, or the broader political situation, I'd love to hear your opinions. And don't forget to like and subscribe so I can continue bringing you content like this. See you in the next video.